But during the French Revolution, there were three Christians who were sentenced to die by the guillotine. One Christian had the gift of faith, the other had the gift of prophecy, and the other Christian had the gift of helps. The Christian with the gift of faith was to be executed first. He was asked if he wanted to wear a hood over his head, and he declined and said he was not afraid to die. I have faith. God will deliver me, he shouted bravely. His head was positioned under the guillotine with his neck on the chopping block. He looked up with a sharp blade, said a sharp prayer, and waited confidently. The rope was pulled, and nothing happened. His executioners were amazed at believing that this must have been an act of God. They freed the man. The Christian with the gift of prophecy was next. His head was positioned under the guillotine. He too was asked if he wanted the hood. No, he said, I am not afraid to die. However, I predict that God will deliver me from the guillotine. At that, the rope was pulled and again, nothing happened. Once again, the puzzled executioner assumed that this must be a miracle of God, and they freed the man. The third Christian with the gift of helps was asked, or was mixed. He was brought to the guillotine and likewise asked if he wanted to wear a hood. <laughs> no, he said, I'm just as brave as the other two guys. The executioners then positioned him face up under the guillotine and were about to pull the rope. When the man stopped them, he said, hey, wait a minute. I think I just found the problem with the guillotine. <laughs> oh, you guys are so slow. You guys are so slow. I'm sorry, Henry. <laughs> First Corinthians chapter twelve. Got to hang on. First Corinthians chapter twelve, verse ten. As we are continuing on the gifts of the Spirit. Verse 10, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. It says, to another different kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. And this is still talking about the gifts of the Spirit. Different kinds of tongues. As I was thinking about this for this week, I thought, you ever have conversations with God out loud? Yes. Well, this is kind of how one of my conversations with God went. <laughs> God, you know, this is pretty controversial for some. And you know the speaking in tongues business I don't really know how this is going to go over in this church. And then secondly, I thought, well, about what Paul wrote. He said in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 18, he says, I thank my God I speak in tongues more than you all. And then third, we can look at Acts chapter 1, verses 5 to 8. It says, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. And then drop down to verse 9, it says, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and to the end of the earth. Now, just one more verse here, down in Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 4. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as a fire, and one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. 
So again, there are people that don't believe that the gifts of the Spirit are relevant for today. They say they're no longer active in this day and age. And as I've told you before, I believe they are active. I see the gifts of the Spirit functioning within our churches today. They are relevant today. So if you believe one is relevant, then you don't exclude any of them from that list. And as we read in Acts chapter 2, verse 4, it said they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues. And as you study 1 Corinthians, you will see Paul spent more time on this one gift that he's talking about here than on any of the other gifts. And the reason being was that there was division in the church over this particular gift. And in the Bible times, there was confusion going on in the church when it came to the issue of speaking in tongues. So Paul took some time in chapter 14 to give the church some instruction on this gift of the Spirit. And so I want to go over some of the highlights of this instruction and what Paul tells us. <coughs> And I want to start off with this. First of all, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 1, Paul tells us to pursue love. And next, we are to desire spiritual gifts. Who wouldn't want the spiritual gifts that we have gone over here earlier? Who wouldn't want those spiritual gifts active in their life? The word of wisdom the word of knowledge, the gift of faith, the gift of healings, the gift of prophecy, the discerning of spirits. You know, as I thought about it over the last several weeks as we have been teaching from this passage of Scripture, this week, wisdom has been needed in my life as Something no, needing to know what God how God wanted me to speak in some very difficult situations. So the word of wisdom was active. The word of knowledge, the gift of faith. Faith believing that God is going to do what he said he would do. And the discerning of spirits. How many of you have ever run into something that somebody just sounds really good at what they're telling you, but just something isn't quite right? You've had that happen to you. Well, that's what discerning of spirits is all about. Somebody's telling you something that sounds really flowery and really exciting, but just, it's just, you've heard the old saying, too good to be true? But let, let the Lord use that discerning of spirits in your heart. And all of these are excellent to have in our life. And also in chapter 14, when Paul talks of prophecy, he says, Prophecy speaks edification, exhortation, and comfort to men and the church. How many of you like to have be edified, like to be built up, encouraged. Yeah, I think all of us do. And in like manner, the church. If the prophecy is done in any other way that gets, is tearing down the church, tearing down individuals, it's not of God. And it's my job, if it happens during a church service, I'm going to tell you that. It's not of God. That's part of my job, and I learned that. Early on in my life, some of you that were here when my dad was pastoring, he says, if anything's out of order, I'll tell you. And, then, and yes, he did. And in this day and age that we live in, we need to learn, in short, to encourage people. 
How many of you have ever just sit and listen to people talking? Anyone? Come on, it, it, it's okay. You can say yes, no. <laughs> Raise your hand. I like to sit and listen to people talk without saying anything. People want you. I just want to listen to what they're saying. And you may or may not be amazed at how people talk to each other. But encouragement, edification, and comfort are not there very often. And I pray that each one of us learns how to do that and begin putting that into practice in our everyday life. Making sure that you, when you come in contact with somebody, that you are encouraging them, that you're building them up. When you're talking about somebody else, you're talking about some, something encouraging. You're not gossiping about somebody else, but you are encouraging what somebody else about somebody else. Learn to encourage each other. Learn to build each other up. Now going back to speaking in tongues, verse 2 says, He who speaks in tongues does not speak to man, but he speaks to God. And with that in mind, I pray a lot. Thanks. I woke up many times this week, early, early in the morning. And I want to say thank you for those of you that pray for me also. I appreciate that so much. But there's times when I pray, I just don't know what to say. I don't know how to pray. I can't think of the right words to say. Anyone ever in that situation, you just feel like you're burdened with somebody and you just don't know what's going on and you're going, man, God, I don't know what to say. I don't know how to approach this. I call my speaking in tongues oftentimes my prayer language. As you go back to what I said, Speaking in tongues, you can speak, it does not speak to man, but it speaks to God. And oftentimes, after I have begun speaking in tongues about a certain issue, I don't know what I'm saying. It's a God given, they call it the gift of the Spirit. And I feel a burden begin to be lifted off of me. And I just begin to thank God for answering that prayer. He who speaks in tongues speaks to God. When I'm in a situation I just don't know how to pray, that's how I go about it. Verse 14, if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays. Now let's go back to Acts chapter 2 for a moment. Remember it said they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues? Just a little portion of that scripture, it's believed that there were about 120 people gathered there at this gathering when this began to happen. And when this happened, a crowd gathered outside. The crowd was amazed. The Bible says there were people that spoke many different languages at that time out in the crowd. And as they listened, each one heard their own language being spoken. And the crowd didn't understand what was going on. It says some were amazed. Some were perplexed. Others thought the group of people that were speaking in tongues were drunk. <laughs> Paul said, you know, these can't be drunk because it's the wrong time of day. Now, I'm not telling you guys to go out and drink a different time of day. So <laughs> keep that in mind. But you know, it's like today, when some people hear it, they think something's wrong. They think it must be wrong. But I want to encourage you to seek after the gifts of the Spirit, including this one, and allow God to use you. 
Whatever you do in the body of Christ, let all things be done for edification. Let it be done to build up each other. Amen. Let it be done to build up the body of Christ. Amen. And if you can't do that, you got work to do. <laughs> if you can't edify, if you can't build somebody up, you got work to do in your life. But encourage one another. And whatever you do, and wherever you are, we need to encourage each other. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31. Therefore, whether you eat or drink, or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. And I want you to stop and think about that just for a minute. As you reflect past, back on this past week, has everything you've done, that you've done, been to the glory of God? You, you, I was going to say, you don't have to answer because some of you are answering already. Has everything you've done been to the glory of God? Amen. At work? Driving your car? Yeah. I was on the phone one day with a, a friend of mine. He's, he's a salesman. <clears throat> and all of a sudden there comes all these kinds of, of, of expletives. Uh, you, know, you know what those things are. And, he, and, and then he goes, oh, I'm so sorry, Craig. <laughs> I am so sorry. <clears throat> Somebody cut him off in traffic. Mm -hmm. While he was talking to me on the phone, I, I know you're not supposed to talk on the phone. I wasn't. <laughs> Is everything that you do to the glory of God? And as we come to a close on the subject of the gifts of the Spirit, chapter 12, verse 30 says, Do, do all have gifts of healings? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? Verse 31, but it earnestly desire the best gifts, and yet I show you a more excellent way. So what's he saying here? First, the gifts of the Spirit are important. In fact, for the body of Christ to function properly, for the church to be healthy, these gifts need to be active in the church. Secondly, Paul says, there's more. I've got more. God's got more for you than just the gifts of the Spirit. And there are two more gifts of the Spirit down in verse 28. Now, most people, as you're reading that scripture, you just miss it. In fact, as you, you, when you read that, you just begin to think twice about what you just read because it just... You skip right over it. And here they are. The gift of helps and the gift of administrations. The word helps is found in the Bible here in just this one time. The gift of helps is found, that word that's translated from the Greek to the English is found just once and it's found right here. The word helps the Greek word translated that helps literally means to relieve, to participate in, or to support. Someone with the gift of help sees a need, and they fill that need. It, it's truly a gift. You don't have to ask them. You don't have to tell them. They see what needs to be done, and they do it. Someone told me, you've, you've got to tell us what, what you need done. Well, I'm not good at telling people what they need to do. And I have a problem with that. I just have a hard time telling somebody, I, I need you to do this or I need you to do that. I'd rather do it myself than ask somebody to do it. But here's an example. A carpenter sees things around the building that need to be done. Now, if he's got the gift of helps, he just takes care of it. The gift of helps would be for them just to do it. We've had doorknobs in the church needing to be fixed. Someone saw the need and they just did it. 
some painting needed to be done. Somebody saw the need, they just did it. And you're, you're really going to like this one. Pulling weeds. <laughs> Somebody saw some weeds that needed pulling, and they just did it. Others, it might be helping someone in need. And I, I want to kick one other thing in here in the gift of helps. As you, if you have the gift of helps, when you see a need, you just do it. You're not expecting anything in return either. But others, it might be helping someone in need, helping a senior maintain their property. <clears throat> and I, I know you get the point. You see it, you do it. I know I've said this several times, but here's, here's one more time. The spiritual gifts are for building up the body of Christ. And here's something else with the gift of helps. Those that have that spiritual gift of helps may see people struggling with some rough issues in their life, such as doubts, fear. Maybe they're dealing with some spiritual battles in their life. Someone with that gift may see someone struggling with those issues. And as you see them struggling with those issues, maybe you'll have a word of encouragement for them, a word of wisdom for them, a word of knowledge for them, a word of discernment for them. And that word of encouragement can mean the world for that individual. It can help that person through the most difficult time of their life. I said just moments ago in verse 31, it says, earnestly desire the best gifts. And I want to say this, it, here, here's a real simple definition of that. You know, because when, when I read that, first off, I'm going, okay, God, you mean to be telling me that you're giving us gifts, and it's listing them out here in your word, and is one really better than the other? You know, what are you telling me? You ever think that? Earnestly desire the best gifts. So here's a simple definition. You know, I feel it's another way of saying this. Seek the gift you need when you need it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. The gifts are not given as a good, better, and best type of thing. The one you need at the time is the best one at that time. Sometimes you need a word of encouragement. Sometimes you need a word of knowledge. Sometimes you need a word of an <coughs> servant of the spirits. And whenever that is exhibited, that's what the best gift was at that time. The one you need at the time is the best one at the time. And remember, it is God that works in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. God wants to have the best for each of us in our lives. God wants the best for you and I. And that's where I want it to be in my life, is doing is good pleasure. Whatever God wants me to do, however any of these gifts of the Spirit are, whatever it is, I want to be functioning where God wants me at. Amen. 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 Let's pray.